Okay, Rick, first a pop question. I'm, I'm with the Castro brothers. Can you tell which one is which? I don't see any, I don't see any rings in there. I think the one in the middle, though, doesn't look like the others. Yeah, We're saying Julian on, <laughs> Julian on the left. All right, is that well, right? It's a Julian on the left. No, that's <laughs> yeah. right there. That's all right. That's good. That's good. Amy, you're wrong. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I am here in the Texas delegation. Incredible honor uh, to be here with Mayor Julian Castro. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. And his brother, Joaquin Castro, who is uh, working his way towards the, uh, the U.S. Congress. Yes. So, um, first of all, how many times are you mistaken for your brother here? Well, back home, it's about 10 times a day. This week, it's about 1,000 times now. <laughs> it's been amazing. <laughs> and, and, and what do you think? I mean, has is, is it gone to his head? No, no, no. But he did. He did a great job. He's done a wonderful job. Um, I'm just very proud. Yeah. So that was it. Was a huge speech. I mean, to uh, to, to come on the national stage like that. Uh, what's a, how how things changed for you? Uh, well, yeah, you're right. It's a huge moment. I was glad to to uh, do it well and get it over with. Uh, but uh, of course, just uh, in terms of being recognized and so forth, especially around. All the great Democrats that are here in Charlotte, uh, it's, it's harder to get down the street right now, as you can imagine. And I imagine the transformation was was immediate. I mean, before the speech, I mean, you, you'd gotten some attention, people started, but... Before the speech, I was eating at Panera, you know, alone. <laughs> now I can't go in there. <laughs> okay, so tell me, you, you've been up there, you know what it's like to have the big moment. Barack Obama's got a really big moment tonight. What does he do? to kind of try to recapture that energy from four years ago. Well, I think he has uh, just a fantastic opportunity to speak both from the perspective of the last four years as the leader of the United States and the progress that the country has made, and then also to speak from the heart uh, and, and relate the way that uh, the First Lady did from the experiences, the struggles that they went through in their life and that Americans, uh, many American families are dealing with now, and, and why the investment that investments that he's making as president, why that's going to lead to more opportunity in the future. And I'm confident that he'll do it. Uh, I think he'll do a great job tonight. But Joaquin, the, the slogan last time around was hope and change. Sure. And it's hard for a, uh, it's hard to run on change again. Uh, you're not done making the change you wanted to do maybe, but how does, how does he do that? He's the incumbent president. He's basically asking to maintain the status quo, at least the political status quo. Well, I mean, I think he reminds the American public of where he started and where we've come. Uh, uh, and the fact that he's faced a very stubborn Republican congressional majority that's made it as difficult as any Congress has ever made it for any president to make progress for our country. And I think the president's going to do that tonight. But doesn't he bear some of that responsibility for that? I mean, I, I would take your point, this has been the most divided we've ever seen, at least in, you know, in, in, in the modern era, uh, the Congress. Uh, oh, well. And he's been unable to attract any Republican support. I mean, is that all the Republicans? Well, I mean, it's tough when, you know, the Senate Majority Leader makes it his top priority to defeat the president rather than creating more jobs for the American people. Uh, that's a party with misplaced priorities. And so I think the president has faced a very tough situation. And even still, we've had 29 straight months of job growth, 4.5 million jobs, and we're bouncing back. So do you think we'll see the president say that we're better off today than we were four years ago? I mean, we heard Bill Clinton make that point emphatically and without hesitation. But we've also seen some of the president's own top advisors, at least initially, have a hard time answering that question. Oh, no, I, I think the case is there to be made. I mean, it's been made very clearly. Uh, and folks ought to remember that when he took office, and we're talking about being on the brink of a Great Depression, uh, losing between 750,000 and 800,000 jobs that month of January 2009. The economy was in a free fall. People have heard that. They didn't just have to hear about it, they were living it. To compare that, where we were then, to where we are now, as Joaquin mentioned, with continuous improvement, nobody is saying that we're where we need to be, but it is a world away, much, a lot of progress from where we were. He needs to make that case. The case is there to be made. He shouldn't uh, back away from the idea that the nation is in a better place, it is better off than we were when he took office on January 20th of 2009. But you acknowledge that there is a challenge here for the president of trying to recapture some of that energy. The energy is obviously here in the hall. I mean, you heard it when you were up on the stage. Uh, but, you know, you look at the approval ratings, you look at the, you know, people ask the question, is the country going in the right direction or the wrong direction? 
you know, it's 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 he's lost a lot of that initial support that, that he had four years ago. Well, I think folks should remember that there were very strong headwinds because he inherited uh, an economy that was in a free fall, and so you're gonna the, the nation is lifting up, it's it's rising, it's progressing, but that's you know that's slow progress, but it is progress. So uh, on November 6, though, once people we've passed Labor Day now, folks traditionally start paying attention more to the election after Labor Day. I'm confident that you're going to have folks out there who are enthusiastic, who see the progress that we've made, believe in the president, and that he's going to win on November 6. Hey, is this your first convention or were you there four years ago? I was there four years ago. We were staying in a Super 8 motel. <laughs> About 30 That's miles right. from town. Uh, we had a good time in Denver. In Denver. Yeah. So, uh, so what, I got to ask you now, I mean, we, we know what your brother's doing. He's running for Congress. If you're successful, we'll see you up yeah. on the Hill. What, what, what the heck's next for you? I'll be in San Antonio for a while. You know, I, I uh, have up to 2017. If the voters will have me, that well, would I just, be my tenure. And I want to be there. We're making like great progress. Continue. It's the seventh largest city now in the nation and uh, a rising city. So I'll be there for a while. All right, Julian Castro, mayor of San Antonio. His brother, Joaquin Castro, candidate for Congress. Thank you so much for joining us.